Welcome to this week's edition of WealthQuest, the show that clarifies the murky world of fund management. I'm Samantha Loring. Our topic of the week focusing on what is involved in the quant fund investment process. Last week we defined what exactly is meant by quant fund analysis and this week we'll look deeper into the investment process required to manage a quant fund. We're reviewing uh, with that with Grant Irvin Smith's quant process at Investec Asset Management and of course Grant Irvin Smith is a portfolio manager for quant funds at Investec. Joining us uh, from Cape Town and here in Johannesburg are two strategists, Kwebi Lakranji, strategist at Klukas Gray Investment Managers and Roland Rousseau, equity strategist from Apps Capital. I'll just start off in studio here, Roland, very quickly recap for us what is quant analysis? Quant analysis is an, a more objective way to analyze markets and what it does is it helps you to test things because you can't test human sentiment or uh, gut feeling so it gives you a much more uh, robust way to look through time and see which strategies work better in different kind of market cycles. Mm -hmm. And you, you can build a model, computer yes. models wh whereby you select certain criteria and they rank Correct. stocks based on those. Correct. Yeah. And of course, uh, Grant, we go, we're going to uh, take a look at the investment process that is used at Investec. Uh, so we've got a graph up on screen and, and uh, you'll be able to talk us through some of the elements there and how you break those down in terms of the, the mechanisms that are used to analyze the, the companies and the stocks. Uh, I think the first point to note is that we use a multi-style approach. We're not, we don't call ourselves value investors or growth investors, for example, because we believe the best way to deliver consistent performance is to diversify across a whole range of different styles. You can see the styles there in that slide. On the, on the outer circle, we go into a lot of detail, but if we just look at the, the inner circle, there's four key ones there. Really what we want to be doing is buying quality companies, trading at attractive valuations, where analyst sentiment is improving, and technicals are supportive. Now the left hand side of that chart is very well covered by most managers, uh, fundamental managers. The right hand side I feel is very neglected in the South African market and therefore we think there's a great opportunity to, to exploit there. Mm -hmm. G give us an example of uh, some of the elements that uh, potentially, you know, some of the market commentators um, coming on CNBC Africa or, or wherever might overlook in terms of their significance at a time like this, for example, in the market, uh, but how it actually is very important when it comes to, to driving stock prices at this point. Well, I mean, like I said, the left-hand side of that chart, value particularly, I think probably 90% of managers in South Africa call themselves value managers, and that is a very long-term strategy. So although, yes, it does work over the long term, you can get periods where you have underperformance for uncomfortably long periods of time. Once, in a, in a market like we're seeing at the moment, the last two years, the factors that have worked very well are, are analyst sentiment, and that's where we look at, um, we look at the sell-side brokers and we we look at what, how their sentiment is changing. Are they warming up to stocks or are they getting cold on a certain stock? And we can judge that by earnings revisions. So we can see when, when a lot of analysts are upgrading stocks, they tend to, if they're upgrading now, they tend to continue up to upgrade for a couple of weeks or even months and the price responds. The other is to just look simply at technicals. There's a wealth of different indicators there that also have worked pretty well over the last two years especially. Mm -hmm. So as I say, these are quite neglected by, by the majority of uh, value managers. You know, if we go back to the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, you go look at stock market history and you go and you look and understand asset management, investment management history, you'll see that the concept of value didn't really exist, in, you know, if you go back that far. People predominantly bought companies because they thought it was a good idea or they liked the way in which the price was movement. So often between fundamentals and what was actually happening in the business, there was a complete disconnect between that and, and the actual share price. And that morphed itself into the 1960s and the 1970s where all of a sudden a whole bunch of academics could sit down and say, well, hang on a second, there's, a, there's something called value. If you underpaying for a business or you don't overpaying for a business and quite frankly you you know th if there's a margin of safety in it that's Warren Buffett um, and a whole bunch of other people that have done so very very successfully over time now that is the South African market today lots of value managers as a matter of fact we've got an ETF which captures a value effect and as a matter of fact if you want to be a good value manager you should look at your value management style relative to the value ETF and say am I capturing that that the ETF is capturing and can I outperform that because quite frankly then you 
own information that the ETF doesn't own at the end of the day. In this case, there's a quantitative way in order to say, well, there's a whole bunch of factors that if you add them together could produce superior returns in markets. And that's what this quant pro pro uh, process is about. If you want to see what's inside that Investec fund and you want to see what's actually some of the holdings that are, that are in that fund, you could see those on your screen. And you can see from Coronation Fund Managers right at the top there, Vodacom, Lewis, and then it runs all the way down to Sun International. And there you can see some of the factors that Grant has actually gone and used. He's used quality value analyst sentiment, and then technicals. And he scored those by a star rating. Grant, quickly take us through the star rating here and just, just briefly, how, did, how do you come up with that as a, as a scoring criteria? Right. Uh, just the first thing, Kirby, you know, the star rating is, is really a simplification just to communicate the idea. The way we actually score the stocks is, is a little bit different. But, I mean, the, the intuition is the same. Uh, the attractiveness of a stock to us is it's a weighted average of its exposure to all these styles. So if a stock has ticks all the boxes, it will naturally score high in our process and end up as a large stock in the portfolio. So if we take the top active holding here, for example, Coronation, you can see there it scores very well on technicals and sentiment, not particularly well on, on value or quality. Um, and I think it's important. I mean, one of the key things that people need to understand in investment is that the stock and the company are not the same thing. You know, a company can be very well run and the stock might still be expensive. So in this case, we're judging very much the sentiment and the technical side. So we're saying we like the characteristics of the stock. Uh, in terms of, of the business itself, it doesn't score as well. But we, you know, we believe the, the sentiment behind the stock is very strong. Grant, do you, do you have a, like if a market, uh, market overlay in your process? In other words, you say uh, currently the market is in a momentum phase and you sort of, you'll then look more for the, 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 the stocks that score on, on those criteria. Um, so you, you have a market view and then you, you, you sort of drill down into the stocks or do you just purely do it from a, from a bottom up kind of stock picking perspective in terms of the screening, the quant screening? Uh, Roland, our process is very much bottom up. Uh, for example, we don't have, uh, we try and strip out, hedge out, if you like, uh, macroeconomic exposures. We don't want to have, you know, big exposures to, to the RAND or interest rates or commodity prices for that matter. Uh, the reason being is we believe those are very difficult to forecast and there's not enough breadth there. In other words, I don't sleep very well at night if my portfolio is, relies on a binary call whether, you know, the RAND appreciates or depreciates because I'm either going to be wrong or right. I'd rather have my portfolio diversified across a, a whole basket of stocks, all with slightly different drivers. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, this is a representation of some of those drivers. And you can see from the mix of stocks, there's, there's not a strong macro view there. It's very much bottom up stock specific. Just going, I mean, just going back to that graph, I and mean, Aspen certainly stands out for me because it is a stock that is considered, if you're look, just looking at the P, for example, is expensive, uh, but it has been one that has a sentiment behind it. You've seen the performance of the stock, and then, of course, it rates highly as well uh, on technicals. So uh, you're seeing the contrast uh, you know, between uh, some of the factors that are overlooked there traditionally by, by portfolio managers here in South Africa, Grant. Yes, I mean, and incidentally, if you do look at our performance relative to value managers, which the majority of the SA managers are, there's, the, it, there's a negative correlation in terms of, of active performance. So in other words, this fund would blend very well with, with other value funds because, you know, you'll get a diversification of risk and, and a smoother performance if you mix the two together. Mm -hmm. as, as a matter of fact, I mean, we've got a, we've got a graph up and actually just show what a track record looks like as far as the quantitative process is concerned. Have a look at your screen over there and there you can see the Investec Active Quant Fund. That now is basically embodying a quant style all the way from 2004. And uh, there you can see the return, 22% per annum. That's a, that's a fantastic return. As a matter of fact, all share only gave you probably about 15% per annum for that, uh, for that uh, total period. If you were with the average uh, fund manager or the f a normal equity fund manager, you would, have, you would have achieved about 18% per annum. So certainly it has achieved decent returns um, uh, over, over time. Remember again that if, you, uh, if you're going to be in a bear market, this is equities. You're still going to see the downside as far as equities are concerned. It's still an equity portfolio. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so, so let's also look at the portfolio characteristics because you've also got a graph uh, that, that potentially you could take us through Grant where we look at uh, the various aspects of the portfolio as it stands right now when it comes to return on equity versus the benchmark, uh, also analyst sentiment there, some of the earnings revisions versus uh, what we've seen in the benchmark general equity space. I mean anything specifically that stands out which sets you apart from other general equity funds here? Uh, Yes, Samantha. Well, I think the key, this is a very important slide for us because this judges whether we are, you know, true to label. We say we're style diversified. We say these are the four key styles we look at. We want to then be sure that the portfolio is exposed to these styles more than the benchmark. So you can see, and it often is a bit of a trade-off because if you go after one, you might sacrifice the other. And that's the, the, the trade-off we have to judge very carefully. So you can see on this chart that we are typically holding stocks that are higher quality than, than the market. At the same time, our portfolio is on average cheaper than the market on P-E ratio and dividend yield. And then we are also positively exposed to sentiment. We are buying stocks that have been, over the last one month, been upgraded by sell-side analysts more than the benchmark. And we're also slightly on the right side of historic growth and price momentum. Mm -hmm. So, as I said, it's a, it's a careful balancing act, but we believe that this is the best way to achieve consistent performance over time. And if you look at the chart that, that Kirby was discussing previously, we're quite proud of the fact that if we look on an on a annual basis, using this strategy, we're able to deliver a fairly consistent return. In fact, we've outperformed our peers in seven out of eight, eight years there. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest benefit of this kind of in investment strategy is that you've got multiple wins from behind. Whereas as a, as a dyed-in-the-wool value manager, you tend to have uh, you know, s times when there are lulls and you don't get the wind um, because you're so focused on only one form of investing. Um, and I think there will be a time when, when value comes back again, but mm -hmm. uh, you want to have uh, more than one driver of, of, of outperformance and also that gives you a better consistency from a risk perspective because if one style doesn't do that well at least you've got another style that's that's counteracting that um, mm -hmm. at times most things can also be uh, highly correlated which means they're all doing the same and you're not getting the diversification but that's the nature of, of the beast